What is your biggest regret in life? Leaving my wife. <laughs> What is the biggest mistake you have ever made in life? Leaving my wife. Well, her name was Sue, and we met from a friend. She was going out with a friend of mine at the time. Well, we got together. She broke up with him, and we got together. Sorry, I left her. I'm really sorry, I left. Her. I'm 70 years old. It's too late. She's married. She's in Georgia, and it's too late. She's got a, a life of her own now, so that's it. Thank you so much. What's your name? Ray. And welcome back to another session with the older man. My name is Paul, and today I want to talk to you guys about something that keeps cropping up. You know, ever since I started this channel, and this summer, this coming summer, will be exactly one year since I got serious about this channel. I am so excited about it. It is now just starting to catch on. So I just want to say, guys, thank you all so much for your support. Thanks for listening to me. Thanks for listening to my rants, my morning walks, my everything. And I'm glad that you guys are getting some value out of this. The amount of men who hit me up on Instagram and ask questions, right? And guys, just so you know, go over to Instagram, join me on Instagram. You can send me voice notes so that it's easier for me to respond because I'm not one that's going to be typing. I don't do this shit too often, but I prefer to send you a quick voice note after you've asked me a question and I can easily respond there. Unfortunately, I can't do that on YouTube. So that is what the Instagram account is for. Now the YouTube account, this is where you guys have to support me to actually make me a few dollars from this thing because it takes a lot of time to do these videos. And I'm not asking for anything more than like my video and watch some of the older works that I've done so that the algorithm know that, hey, you know what? This guy's pretty interesting. And they'll push the content out to more people. All right, that's all. That's all I ask. Of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can click in the link in the description link. And of course, if you want to have a deeper, longer session one-on-one -on -one with me, you can book a session with me on my website, askanolderman.com. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the subject of today. Because this is where most of the questions come to me online. It's all about relationships and more importantly, marriages. People who are having problems with their marriages, guys who are going through divorces and it's killing them, women who are contemplating a divorce, people who are contemplating suicide because of divorce. Marriages are not in a good spot right now. So Rebecca, is it an outdated concept? Well, not for you, because you still want marriage. Yeah, yeah, I do. To be honest, I do think we now live in a world where people are disposable. So if we, you can have a fight with your partner and you just get on an app, swipe a couple or whatever, and you've got a new man. Um, and so I think marriage um, is a good... Not always, but I think for me, because I've had so many failed relationships, for me, I've always said... When a man, you know, says, you know, I'm going to marry you, and for me, it shows a commitment, and it's a commitment. I'm a bit of a traditionalist, really. Has anyone ever proposed to you? They have, yeah. Ooh. Twice I've been proposed to, actually. Aww. And this brought me to a subject that I thought about almost, jeez, 20 years ago. After I had my second divorce, this is something that I thought about. And it's a concept that I want you guys to listen to, because I think this is the only way that we could actually solve the marital problems today and you guys let me know what you think and it is simply this marriage should never be until death do us part yes i said it i think that this is one of the biggest problems with marriages i think what this old-fashioned this outdated concept has done it has put way too much pressure on today's modern society <laughs> What you want is commitment then? No, I, I want someone to really um, commit. Um, yeah, I do, and I do feel like you know, we're seeing it now on the statistics. It's everyone's so easily disposable. But do you need marriage to get commitment? I mean, that's the thing. No, um, I don't. I don't think so. I yeah. really want. I'm like you. I have this real white wedding dream in my head. I'd love to get 
married. I actually don't want a marriage contract. <laughs> um, I know that sounds ridiculous, yeah. but I, I just want the day I want to declare my love to somebody. I want the dress, dress. but I don't want the contract because I, yeah. I, I feel the opposite to you. I yeah. feel as though once you've committed yourself to somebody, a piece of paper isn't going to make that any different yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, actually, the love is already there and the commitment's already there. And if they decide to walk, they'll yeah. walk. Listen. Until death do us part was part of the marriage vows simply because we didn't live until 80, 90 year old back in the day. Most of us, I'm talking your average individuals, most of us only lived to around 45, 50, somewhere even less, 35. Okay, a lot of women died during childbirth. A lot of us didn't make it cross <laughs> the old five zero man. Most of us were fine saying till death do us part back then. But now we're living into our 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s. And that's a long commitment with one person. So here's my concept. And first of all, I want you to think about this one critical point. Which contract do any two parties enter into? Any contract at all where it's a lifetime contract. I don't know of any. Till death do us part technically means that there's no expiration date on that contract. And let's get serious about what marriage is. Marriage is a contract. Because anytime you have to sign on the dotted line to say, yes, I'm going to take responsibility for this person. And yes, if I'm sitting in a vegetable state on a bed, that person is authorized to pull the plug, that person is authorized to do every single thing about my life. That is a contract, my dear. A contract is a cold, hard, legal entity. That's the best way I can, that's the, I want to show you the reality of it. it. Has nothing to do with romance. Romance part, that's different. The passion part, that's different. There is a contract involved. You are legally bound to the individual. Yes. And it's forever. The only contract that I know of that it's forever. I think that that contract should no longer be applied on into today's modern marriages. Because let's look at it. Let's look at the facts. Most marriages, 52 or 53% of them are failing. Rarely do marriages make it over five years. Rarely. Here's my suggestion. Ready for it? Marriages should be a five-year renewable contract. Yes. The reason for that, five years is a long enough commitment to say, hey, we're in it. If there's a child involved, there should be a 10-year renewable contract. It's because usually one party or the other will want out and the other will want to preserve the marriage. Usually, one person wants out. It's never, rarely, do we get both individuals making a decision that they want, they want to be apart. Usually it's one. That means if one person wants to be out, the other person has to compromise in some shape or form. There has to be some negotiation in order to get the other person to comply to get what they want. There is a negotiation, a renegotiation period. But here's the kicker. But because we're now in an era where women can get just as great a job as a man, she gets to hold her assets and he gets to hold his assets. Whatever they build within the marriage, they get to split that 50-50. That's the partnership. That's the partnership agreement. If the woman came into a marriage and she married a high value man with an extremely high amount of assets, she don't get his assets. She don't walk away after five years with the majority, with 50% of his assets. I was going to say, so is that almost a business decision in that once you've got the paper, then you have to... Let's face it, you have to share what you've got. Well, I think, mine is yours. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's a practical decision. I think that because I have two children outside of my relationship with Joe, yeah. it would be very difficult 
to throw everything in as together because there's lots mm. of things I need to set up for my yeah. children's future that I wouldn't expect Joe to put aside mm. for, if you yeah. know what I mean. So we've we've got our things that are together and then we've got our things that are separate. So, He's got a child, I've got two children to care for. So if you split up, and uh, we hope that doesn't happen, you would take out what you came in with? Yeah, we are both 50-50 on the house we live in right. now, so that's ours and we're and that is all 50-50. But then we have our own separate things um, and little bits for our, for our children. If she wasn't working, there has to be a calculation of how much money she would get if she leaves the marriage, if she was working for that period of time. So she gets that, what you call that severance package for being in a relationship where she was not working. So she gets her severance pay, she walks away, just like a job. But she don't get half. Why should she be entitled to half? She didn't come into the relationship with that. If during the relationship, the man is working extra hard and she isn't and she can work, she's an able-bodied woman, she should get her ass out there and work. I love when we have the young women on here because they teach me so much because really I'm such a wally. You know, when I, <laughs> when I hear them talking with, you know, so smart and so switched on and I just like, oh, I'm in love. And it's wonderful. <laughs> and, you know, it was all so quick. You know, I was pregnant in three months, married in six months. We immediately threw everything into the same pot. Yeah. Now, luckily for me, I chose a good one and we're still very happy 16 17, I can never remember, years later, oh. and it's worked out. Mm. But actually, it was foolish. It was foolish. That's what, you all, that's what you ladies wanted. you got to remember, in the past, women married men simply to secure their financial future. Nowadays, men are not needed for that. If there are kids involved, 10 years, you got to stick it out for 10 years, my dear. You guys got to realize in 10 years, you have to take care of that child through his most formative years. Work it out. The problem is, is that people give up too easily within marriages. Listen, we've been through some rough times, my wife and I, but we realize, hey, we got kids, we got commitment, we got duty, we got to keep our asses in check. And it forces us to work on each other. It forces us to compromise with each other. We have no choice, but we're both financially yoked. We both know that, hey, if I walk away, she's good to go. She, gets a, she got a high paying job. I make my own money. We're good to go. Split the assets. We're good to go. But we know that it's not all. But because we are in a modern society where she can work and make her own money and I can do the same thing, marriage is no longer about the money. She don't have to marry me for the money. She has a master's degree, she got a high-powered job, she can walk away and still make her money. I'm fine on my, on my side as well. Every 10 years, you renew that. Now, we haven't done that, don't get me wrong. So all I'm saying is, if you guys value your relationship, if you value the companionship, value the things that both parties are bringing to the table, which is what you should have loved with the person in the first place, if those things are still there, or even if, even if they slip left or right, bring it back together. Learn to compromise. Marriage is all about a compromise. That's it. The most common cause of divorce is not money. The most common cause is the wife does not feel like she can rely on her husband, and the husband does not feel that what he is giving is appreciated. In other words, he doesn't feel like he's a real giver. She doesn't feel like she's really receiving. That kills it because essentially the man needs to know that he is providing and the woman needs to know that she has someone to rely on. The problem is, is that the Disney fairy tale that has been pushed to women have made them think that they should be happy in marriages all the time. And that's bullshit. Marriages are not supposed to be about happiness. Marriages are supposed to be about compromise. We come together as two human beings and we share companionship. And with that, we, we're operating in the same space. Yes, we share expenses and we live under one roof, which allows us to have a lot more because we now have dual income that is helping both of us in the short and the long term. So there's a lot more benefits to it. If you throw kids into the mix, now you have two people 
rearing the child and helping to split the time and energy and the money into the kids. Ridiculous when I hear women leave with the kids and happy that they're single mothers, not realizing you have just took on everything on your own. I don't get it. Now I will understand if the man did absolutely nothing and you were working full time and coming home to be a full time mom and he did absolutely nothing. I mean, not even 10%. I would understand that. But still, 10% is better than nothing. <laughs> and the child still gets the security of the man in the house. But I will tell every man, if he neglects his fatherly duties, then he's a deadbeat dad. Regardless if he's in the house or out of the house, if you're still neglecting being a dad, you're still deadbeat. You're still nothing. I make sure I provide my daddy roles, the discipline, the discipline, that's most important. And I'm not talking about shouting and being rough, but just making them understand everything from a critical point of view, from a rational point of view. This balance is needed, required in a household to balance my wife's more nurturing personality. Marriages should be a 10-year renewable contract with kids. Assets are divided equally. Both parties have to go back to work. No party gets to take lifestyle with them. If the woman makes more and the man walks away from the, from the marriage, he don't get to get her money just to maintain his lifestyle. Lifestyle comes with the money, but it also comes with the partner, whether she's male or whether it's female. You ladies are gonna start to learn how it feels being the primary breadwinner, and when you leave the marriage, the man is going to sue you for alimony. More and more men are going to get alimony. You ladies gotta be careful. Let's look at this video, just like I'm and you want an example of that? Here it is, right here. Where you had to go on tour to pay alimony yeah. to your ex-husband. I don't know if the number's correct on Google. I saw it was like 30000 a month or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> co correct us if we're wrong. <laughs> so looking back on it in hindsight, what would you have done differently when you first got married in terms of shielding your assets? I would... <laughs> have never let a person have that much power over my money, my life, over anything ever again. So I would, I would now I, I'm learning, I, I, I'm in control of my business, I'm in control of my life, and um, it's mandatory that I learn more about the finance business, you know, so I don't ever have to be robbed again by, you know, Maybe somebody you think you can trust, you know what I mean? There you go. Celebrities are crying because they, have, they had to pay out alimony to a man. It's happening. As more and more women start to make more money, this is what's going to happen. So, guys, let me know what you think. But I am a bit shocked by the amount of women who are leaving marriages. Even wealthy marriages. Women are looking for a lot more than just money out of marriages these days. It, it's bizarre. That women leave men 80% of the time. And if they're college educated, it's 90. So if you get divorced, it's 80% of the time like the woman leaves. And one of the number one predictors of divorce is actually if the woman out earns the man. Oh, I love that. I yeah. actually love that. I can't lie. I you love, love that. that? You don't I think that's that. kind of no, I'm like, girl, you you go get that. You it, go get a man, and like, yeah, you go get that. Like, really? Yeah. Like, why why is there like a lack of empathy for men? It's like, not a lack of empathy. It's but more there is because like they're yeah. they're breaking up a family and lifelong commitment and a home, and your 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 reaction is, you go like go get that go get the bag, sis, or like I'm so happy for you. When that's actually a really like that's a sad situation. Like your wife is leaving you. And everything has to be given to her is quite bizarre this expectation is crazy and more and more women are regret leaving their husbands i mean a lot of them are going on TikTok and boasting about oh i got a divorce today and then you see videos later on oh i regret leaving my husband i regret leaving my husband so i recently started dating again um after oh, no. being 
in a relationship for 15 years, I decided it was finally time to dip my toe into the dating pool. I thought this could be fun. You know, maybe I would meet someone. If nothing else, like maybe I'd make some friends. Yeah, I was not prepared for the onslaught of misadventures that transpired. Misadventures. I know that the dating world has changed quite a bit. You know, I mean, everything's gone online and all that fun stuff. And I was okay with that. But nothing could have prepared me for any of what I've encountered. I left my husband because I was more educated. They're leaving husbands for crazy and the most bizarre things only because the courts actually benefit women when they leave and they suck men. That's the reason why men no longer want to get married. And men are wondering like, why aren't men wanting to get married these days? Why are men not even approaching me and talking to me anymore? Why are men checking out completely? Look at the risk reward of getting into a relationship with a woman, potentially for a family and kids. You know, if you want to sleep around and just like hoe it up as a dude and salute brother, go handle business. The okay. game ends the same for us. Is, the, is that enough? Can you find him? happiness? Can you find happiness and joy for some men? It's great. But I think every man on a deeper level yearns for a family, yearns for that dream, like a woman that's that supportive, nurturing. And, and what I'm saying is this solution that I'm suggesting is the only way to save marriages because men want marriages, but for a totally different reason. Men want to ensure that he gets a woman to carry on his next lineage, to carry on his seed, move his legacy to the next generation. What's the sense of working? What, to just use it all away and just die, well, finish? We, as a human species, we have very natural biological needs. We need another human being with us because we're social creatures. Second, we need to carry on our DNA. We need whoever we are, the shell that's dying, we need to pass on our sperm, our DNA, who we are. Those are our two primary needs as, as a species. I think that, uh we thrive in relationships that are supportive and intimate and satisfying. And I don't think it's very hard to do that. It does involve picking the right person and knowing how to pick the right person. And it does involve friendship being the basis of your relationship. And, and when people do that, we find as we study them over the life course, and we've done 20 year follow-ups of couples, the, the relationship just gets better and better. So I think it's just a matter of learning certain social skills and luck, you know, picking the right person really, a lot of it is a matter of luck, but we're meant to be in relationships. Listen guys, women now realize that marriage is no longer an economic necessity for them. They know it, but what do we do? So now they're saying, hey, I want a child. I don't need the man, but at least I want a child. Oh, I can get the child, I can go to a sperm bank and get a child. But really, do you really want to go to a sperm bank, get a sperm donated by some freaking guy that need money because his pizza job isn't working? He just goes whack off in a jar because he's healthy. Some little pimple faced dude who's who needs just selling sperm rather than actually going and finding in, in negotiating with a man to actually have a child is, I mean, ladies, you got to understand that those are the realities of what you're looking at. And you, do you have any idea how much IBF costs? Everybody's about, oh, I'm freezing my eggs. You have any idea how much it costs? Just one, just one round. I'm going to get some figures. I'm putting it up here, but I'm, I don't know much about the U.S. figures. I was, I'm, I don't know if I'm mistaken, but I heard something like 17,000 per one round, which might not work. Most Americans are broke. IBF is literally for the rich. It's not for poor people. It's not for average people. The average person in America right now, especially the average woman, most Americans right now are literally 
not capable of having enough money in the event of a medical emergency. One paycheck. That's insane. Yet it's supposed to be the richest country in the world. Anyway, now what we're actually starting to see is more common law marriages. What is a common law marriage? Common law marriage is when you're living with someone, but you haven't legally married that person. Kids, but I've got a really lovely partner, and for instance, he's taking the kids to the doctors today for me. He's, you know, and he's very... Share your life. We, sh we share and our life. And so say we split up and I don't know, 10 years, whatever, he has contributed to the household. I wouldn't want to then be saying, well, it is what it is, you're not getting a penny, because ultimately, you know, it's, it's a partnership. Yeah. So morally, you would feel that without you sort can of the letter do that. of the law. This is yeah. the thing, is you can yeah. do that. Yeah. You can make those decisions together. Gentlemen, you got to be careful. If you're cohabitating with a woman for any length of time, anywhere between three months to a year, depending on what country or what state you're in, and you guys decide to break up, she could sue you for alimony under common law marriage and win. So, gentlemen, you have to be careful. But if you stick with the five-year renewable contract marriage, I think it makes things a lot easier. Most people can stick out a relationship for five years because usually it doesn't go bad in the first year or second year. By year three, you're starting to feel the pressure. People become very real. Things get a little bit testy. But if you can get over the hump and realize, all right, I only got a year and a half left with this man or this woman, and then we can dissolve this marriage, no problem. It's easier, it's easier, the pressure is off. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. Let me know what you think. Of course, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification button and let's have a conversation. All right? And hey, if you want to know more about my thoughts on reasons why you should never marry a single mother, check out my next video. Check out the next video here. All right? And so you guys can learn a lot more about navigating relationships. Just so you understand, it's not every single, just so you understand, not every single mother is created the same. And I'm not saying that you should stay away from every single, single mother. I'm just saying there are certain women with kids that you have to have extra caution. And I describe it here. All right. And listen, always remember, whenever in doubt, always ask an older man. All right. <laughs> Cheers.